Cloud. Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Art Teachers Art Club. Today we are doing jelly printing with Nancy Gittleman. And um, we've had a lot of positive response for this project. I'm very curious myself because I'm uh, very new to this technique. So this is going to be very exciting. It's my dining room table is a hot mess right now with everything all over it all the supplies and everything within arm's reach. So hopefully my cat won't land in the paint today um, and then run around the house with it. So um, I wanted to just request uh, if you, let me start with my email. I do that every week. I'm going to, this is my email. If you don't have it, copy it down and I'll add you to my mailing list. It's mndnspirit at aol.com. Also, uh, we have a, an instructor for next week and an instructor for September 10th, but nobody for September 4th. So if anybody is interested in volunteering to run that session, please contact me. Otherwise, we're going to end up skipping a week because I know everybody's going to be a little nuts getting ready for school here in New York. Hopefully, they'll figure out what we're doing uh, by then. So um, I'm going to hand it over to Nancy and highlight her for now. Nancy, you're going to let me know when you want me to spotlight your document camera video, okay? Okay. Okay. So, hey everybody, I am uh, Nancy Gittleman and I work in San Francisco. Um, my forte is actually ceramics. And when I was looking through different jelly prints online, just to kind of look at different people's videos, um, there was a woman who actually does jelly prints with underglazes on ceramics. So, I am so excited to try that once I get better access to a kiln. And, um, what I'd like to do is show you a lot of the materials that I have. You don't need to have all these materials. I always do things overwhelmingly, um, not on purpose. It's just how I function. Um, and I can hear my son laughing. But um, I just want to show you a lot of different techniques you can use. And then um, you choose what's best for your classes or how you want to relate something to a certain subject matter. Um, I. Usually I relate what I'm doing to what a teacher does in the classroom. Um, I bring the materials and it could be the day I walk in and I say, what are you studying? And they tell me and then I turn it into that lesson. I mean, I already know what I'm going to do, but then I just add science or whatever it is. Math, history, social studies, um, animals. So um, what I'd like to do is show you some prints that I have and then we can get started. So. Um, if you want to switch me to the table platform, Steph, okay. that'd be great. Um, there we go. Great, thank you. Yep. So jelly printing, I bought my first jelly print plate this COVID vacation. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. When COVID started, um, I bought the jelly plate, you know, from the jelly people. Um, and it was really fun. And then I went online and learned how to make it myself with the gelatin. Um, so I made two of them the other night um, and uh, with gelatin. And then just so you all see, I bought this stuff from, I bought it at Joanne Fabrics, which happened to be on sale for half the price. It's this stuff called pre-cut, but it's acetate. And so what I did was I bought it to put under and above my jelly plate so it would be a lot easier to move around. Um, and I did this jelly plate in a pie plate, um, which was really easy because I don't make pies. And then I did another one in a square form that I have. Um, and this one actually, uh, when I did this, it uh, spilled all over the floor before it made it into the fridge. So uh, it's not terrible to clean up, but it was, it was kind of fun. Um, anybody who knows me knows I like to get dirty. And so I just want to show you a good way to keep it is with this acetate, get acetate wherever you can. Um, and then um, this jelly plate picture is from taking the jelly, taking the ink and 
the paint and putting it all over the jelly plate and then smearing it around with a um, credit card. And then I cut the edges of the credit card. I'm sure you all do this when you're painting so that you can do patterns. Um, this is the same thing, but this was a different color combination. And then this was the ghost print of it, which was after I printed it once, then I did it again and I took, I put the paper on and then this is what was left. Um, this print I did today, um, I'm going to hold it up to the document camera as much as I can. Uh, this I printed first and then I tried to use an image from the magazine, a black image. The black ink comes, is supposed to come off on the jelly print. I'm not so good at this, but um, that was the design. It was a really nice design of a um, skyline. I tried it with a couple of other different kinds of magazines. That's why I asked people to bring a picture that had been printed from a laser printer, because the laser printer will come off easily on a jelly print. I don't have access to a laser printer right now. This was the circular form that I used that scratching with the credit card. Um, this was the ghost print of it. Uh, this I printed on uh, music paper, which I got from somebody on uh, freecycle.org. So I went to her place and got a bunch of these papers. I just love music on paper. Um, this was a lot of different colors. Um, these are just a jelly print. This I put some cardboard down and then I did the print and then I couldn't get the cardboard up so the cardboard's still on the paper. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, this is pretty cool, I think. Um, this is fabric um, and then I printed the, I did, I'll do a, an example of it and then I used some um, prints that I have, some wood print blocks that I have. And then also I have something, um, I don't know, I'm going to hold it up to the document camera. This it's like a, it's like a button, but it's a print of something. And so it's carved out. So I use that to print this on the jelly plate. Um, this jelly, this is a picture of a lot of um, brown paper bags that I did. And um, I negatively printed the flowers or leaves. And then after I did the separate versions of red, green, and blue, and they dried with white, then I just ripped them up and made a collage. Um, this I did with uh, some things from nature. And then I added that gold paper. I don't know if you guys, wherever you live, have access to this gold paper that they, it's a gold tissue kind of that you can rub on top of What's that glue called? Glue sticks. You put the glue stick down and you rub the gold on it and it comes off. But this I thought was pretty cool. This I did um, on, I got a bunch of old uh, books from different languages and um, then I glued that on as the background and then I printed the round one with just letters because I work with four-year-olds. So this was really easy and I took away the paint, the, the paint, or the glaze, uh, with Q-tips, and then it printed on this paper. Um, this is one that I used with uh, just a piece of um, nature, which I went out today and was scavenging. Um, and then this is a couple of colors of the same thing. So that's pretty much, um, this, this one worked really well, I think. Uh, this I used, um, I put these three leaves down and then I did the color on the jelly. I put the color on, I'm sorry. And then I did the leaves and then I put some bubble wrap. So that's what the color, the design is from that. Um, and I'm, yeah. Uh, these, you know, when you do the negative positive space, it's really fun because it always comes out really nice. This one is a print that I did. Um, I just put the color on the jelly print, the jelly plate. And then I used our infamous toilet paper rolls and I printed and then I used earplugs because they were round. So I was doing like a round theme and then I printed it from that. I'm trying where I live to use materials that I have at home 
if I can, if I'm going to do something with kids this year, because our kids, I pray, are going to be remote all year. Um, so um, this is also one with the negative space on the uh, music sheet. So you can basically use anything. If anybody gets the newspaper, just a gray sheet of newspaper can be absolutely beautiful. Um, this is the print on paper of the Indian prints, the wood print block, and then the button that I had. Um, so I'm ready to get started, um, if you guys are ready. And if you don't have a certain material I'm talking about, just use whatever you have, and then um, you can know how to go forward from there. Steph, do you want to tell me when there's questions, or will I see, because I can't access the chat. Um, the only thing questions? there is Jacqueline said, I haven't had luck transferring magazine prints. Okay. That's all yeah, we got. I, okay, thank you. I tried that so much. It just didn't. Just, I, I actually did that one time. I did it with, um, I actually did it with wood. And I did it with magazine using um, Mod Podge, or there's you can actually use the um, there's a gel, a like an acrylic gel from Liquitex. I did it actually with my class, so we were pretty successful. Photo transferring, that's what we did. Oh, oh, I just did that with um, packing tape and laser print paper. Okay, okay. So that worked out really well too. Um, Nancy, you said you didn't have a laser printer at home, but could you talk us through how to transfer the laser print to the plate? Is well, that that's what I, that's what um, Jacqueline was just talking about. I, I learned, I learned it from a video on, je on, on a jelly print video. There's a woman who does it jelly prints. Uh-huh. I don't know, Jacqueline, if you saw the same one. And she, this woman wears kind of gloves on her hands. She's really good with, with jelly prints. And um, I don't, um, yeah, she, and she usually has like long sleeves on. And she, I tried to learn it from her and I collected everything. Yeah, she I think that's the lady I watched too. Yes. Was she really I, messy? <laughs> she's not messy. That must have been another lady then. But I've watched several of them because I was obsessed with it. And yes, I was determined to make it work. So I watched like every video I could find. I've yeah. had all kinds of luck with the packing tape transfer. That's so easy. But I have had no no luck with the magazine transfer. Yeah, the jelly, the, 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 the duck, the clear tape is so interesting. Yeah, that's fun. But that Nancy, magazine is disappointing. <laughs> Nancy, can I ask you before we go on? You made the plates. I've never had luck with making plates. So what I did, Patricia, is um, again, I watched a couple videos and then I went, what I ended up doing was I used the, um, you know, I didn't, there's one person who does it with rubbing alcohol. I didn't use rubbing alcohol. I ended up just using the, um, the uh, Knox gelatin with the vegetable glycerin okay. and um and the hot water and then i went because i like heavy thick i went with the person who added more gelatin so okay. my recipe actually i can remember it because it was easy it was one and a half cups of the vegetable glycerin it was you put that in a i put it in a big um you know a microwavable glass bowl pyrex bowl and then i sprinkled seven Knox gelatin packages or seven times two and a half teaspoons because that's how much is in a gelatin pack. So either seven packets or seven times two and a half teaspoons. And I sprinkled it on the glycerin. I waited a minute, I stirred it, and then I, mic I heated up hot water and I one and a half cups hot water, poured that in, and that was all I needed to do. It was perfectly easy and to put that in my tray that I had. So I used a pizza tray, and then I used another square uh, tray that I had because I bought so much vegetable gel glycerin, I had enough to do. I bought way too much of both because I always make mistakes, so I wanted to make sure I had enough. And then I put it in the refrigerator and, uh, 
then, uh, you know, by nighttime, it was, it worked really well. Um, Do you have to leave it in the refrigerator? Like no, if they take it out. Um, some people said they could, um, no, they could just leave it on the counter, but it's been over 100 degrees here, so I didn't think that that was going to, you wouldn't form into gelatin. Very I'm, in, I'm in Texas. I never cure mine in the fridge. I just leave them on the counter, and I've been using them like this for over a year, and I've never had any mold or anything. I don't like to use them cold because of the condensation when you bring them out into the room. No, it was, no, I just put it in the refrigerator to uh, set up. Yeah, but I've heard other teachers keep theirs in the fridge to avoid molding. And I'm like, oh, I don't <laughs> That's got to be a pain. <laughs> so I'm going to, um, so I'm going to use my gel print. And um, I, uh, I bought special paint for this. I feel so excited. Um, I bought this golden open paint, which is thin. Um, you can use any kind of acrylic paint. I usually use my cheap acrylic paint, Speedball, or what else do I have? Yeah, I pretty much have Speedball, or, yeah, Speedball. I um, I let's see, like we have requests, and Jacqueline also, if you guys could both, after the, the session, can you email me the exact recipe for your prints, for your, um, sorry, your plates, your gelatin plates? Yes. Yes. And then yes. I will send them out to the whole of mail. Of course. Yes. Great. Thank no you. Problem. And I also, um, I bought new brayers because my brayers are at work. And, but I usually use these because um, I, again, I teach with four-year-olds. So a lot of this is made from, this print is made from the sponge roller. And the prints come out a little bit different if they're, depending on the material you use. Um, so what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with um, the acrylic paint and you don't need much. So this is on the pre-purchased situation. This is on the purchased one. Um, and I'm going to make a little purple here because I like to mix colors. And I noticed with this open paint, you don't use so much paint. Um, where's my white? Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of white in here. So this, you know, blue and red and white. So I'm going to um, use my brayer. And when you roll, you, I kind of pick it up uh, to make sure it goes. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't that? <laughs> um, oh, wow. Okay. So um, it's a happy accident. Yeah, I should have printed it. Okay. <laughs> So, um, okay, and then what I do is I copied this woman and she has a sketch pad and she just cleans off her roller on her sketch pad, which then you can use, you know, for like collages and things later. Um, so I'm going to do this and then what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just take um, a credit card or whatever you want and make sure that if you work on a jelly plate, it's not, um, it's not sharp. So this is not working the same as it did this morning um, because I probably am using Because it. you're on camera, that's why. I'm well, looking, looking at you. I'm trying to make texture here. Maybe not enough paint? I think I'm going to, yeah, okay. Could be because I was using the other. So what I'm going to do, and when I went today outside, I kind of went shopping in the street. And I got all these really cool natural materials. So um, I'm going to put this on here. And I'm going to put, I went through people's compost. I'm curious to see if I am going to get on the next door app. And so these are very thick. These are really thick. And then I'm going to find the good part. So I'm using watercolor paper. And then what I'm going to do is I, you can rub it with your hands. You know, you can use, I'm going to even do it with string later. You don't have to use uh, exactly what I'm using. Please be creative. That's the most important thing. Um, I'm using my hands because these things are so three-dimensional. They're really hard to push down. With the jelly plates, don't use anything that can damage it. So uh, let's see how this works. Oh, that's interesting. 
Um, oh, look what it did. Can you see the marks from the, uh, what this happened here? It kind of, um, that's wow. interesting. I should have done more of that. Uh, okay, so there's that. And then when you have um, a jelly plate that you've done something, if you can see how it leaves, hang on a second. I'm just remembering to turn on my light. Don't, don't laugh at me, hang on. My friends that are on, they know me well. Okay, hello. <laughs> so now you can see the plate that was left. Um, it has the ink on it from the negative. And then I have this thing. I don't know what it is. It's from a um, printmaking class I took in college or something. I don't know. And it just, you smooth it down. And it works. I like it better than using my hands, actually. All right. And then, oh, isn't that interesting? Oh, that's beautiful. You see, like who knew? Oh, wow. Okay, so I kind of know what I'm doing, but it's really fun. This is just so much fun, this jelly print. And because of it just dries in a second, a millisecond. And um, so when you want to clean your jelly print, I use baby wipes, baby wipes from Costco that don't have any smell. And then I am so frugal, I just cut part of it off. And then I just use part of it to clean like this. Can and Lysol wipe the same way? I don't use Lysol wipes. I, 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 every time I've watched a video about jelly prints, everybody talks about baby wipes. Okay. I am wondering if, um, the Lysol has a chemical in it that hurts the jelly or does something. Um, I don't clean mine ever. I just keep, I print until most of the paint printing. off and then I just leave it. Because like sometimes the paint will dry on there, but then when you go to add acrylic the next time you use it, some of that comes off on there and I think it adds it a cool, cool character yeah. to it maybe. Yeah, I agree, that would be nice. Um, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my other acrylic. I just want you to see the difference. So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use the speedball acrylic. And I'll get one that has more paint in it. I only have 400 tubes of this stuff. <laughs> and then I'm going to just randomly put a little blue in just because. Okay, so this is a lot of ink. And I'm going to roll it out. Yeah, it's a little portion of but I'm not watching it. I'm watching. I'm watching it. And this is a lot of paint. Um, which is kind of fine. And then I'm going to roll it out on my other page of my sketchbook. It's just so much fun. And uh, leaves. Okay. And then I'm going to put um, the printmaking. I'm going to use these wood block prints. So again, anybody that knows me knew where I was supposed to go this year and it didn't happen. So I'm kind of frustrated. And then this is this small one. Can you see it? I'm sorry, what's happening here? There, with this. And I'm just kind of printing it in. So this has a lot of ink on it. So it's filling up the buttons. And then I'm going to use this paper. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I made all these papers today. So I pre-watercolored a bunch of papers today. Um,
because I wanted paper with a background, which where I come from, you know, with the kids I work with, the little ones, this is a whole activity, is uh, coloring the, uh, spending a whole day painting the paper. And of course, it doesn't matter what you do because it's going to be nice. And this came out very, can you see it? Oh, yeah. that's pretty. You can see it's very recessed. The pink purple is very recessed. Um, and then I'm going to do another ghost print because I like the ghost prints almost more. Um, you know what I'm going to do? Hang on. I'm going to do a ghost print with this other. I pre-printed a piece of paper, a, a green, this green. So I'm going to use a lighter green print on top of my dark green background. What is nice about the jelly print that I know if we do it with kids that they're going to like is the texture of the jelly print. And then if it rips, by the way, if something happens and it rips or you don't, you know, that didn't work so well. If it rips and, and um, you, uh, the one you make from home, if it rips, you can uh, put it in the microwave and use it again. You just microwave it, melt it down, and use it again if, from the one that you made. So um, I'll just keep this here, and I'm going to get one that I made. So it's really easy to move them when they're on this acetate. And um, so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to clean my brayer. Maybe it won't clean so much. Okay. I basically just want to get things off of it. Um, because some from the natural materials, it tends to stick on there. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, um, the print where you scrape it. That was so much fun. So um, I'm going to use these open that smear easily. And, um, you know, I'm just going to stick with the primary colors because then when they blend, they'll look good. And they little blue. Can't make a mistake. You know what I mean? And um, hopefully one will make brown. I'm going to stick a little. Whoops, that's red. Oh, this is going to be funky. Okay. I thought it was white. Um, there's my white. Sometimes the purple, the blue, and the red get too dark. And I'm going to, now I'm going to use my credit card again. So, you know, this is all those places that, you know, you don't, uh, you don't get, you don't do their credit card. What's it called? You don't buy, they send you a free credit card, you know, and you don't use it. So I'm going to spread the paint around. And I'm going to go different places and spread it with the same color. So any of the red, I'm going to stick with the red, switch my card, move my yellow. It works a lot different on my purchased jelly plate, I can tell you this. In what and way? It, um, this homemade jelly plate takes the paint differently. Better or worse? I think it's different. I'm not going to say better or worse because somebody else might really like it. Um, and then I have uh, my rags that have become rags, towels that have become rags, you know. And um, so I'm going to print this. And then I'm going to look for that thing. I don't know what this is called. I'm sorry. It's a baron. Baron? B-A-R-O-N? B-A-R-E-N. 
B A R E N. It's it's just for printmaking, right? Yes. Okay. So then, yeah. See, like you know, like you can't go wrong. It's just just works so well. Um, and then I'm gonna do a ghost print. Trying to find the texture of the paper. The kids really like, my little ones, they really like when we use watercolor paper and, or when there's a surface of the uh, matte board because I use matte, uh, excuse me, not matte board, um, masonite when they do ceramics. They really like to feel the surface, a fine detailed surface difference. So, yeah, see? I mean, I, I just think it's really, uh, is it too bright? There. Um, they make really good backgrounds. Um, and I'm going to do one with the, uh, I'm going to actually, you know what, I'm going to take your advice and try to do one. Maybe I'll lighten it up a little bit. I'll do some with another blue with a round. Halo blue. And I'm gonna, <laughs> this is so cool. This is like math, you know, like figuring out why it's doing this pattern or something. Um, and then I painted a piece of uh, paper, uh, watercolor with a round design for my round print. Now, I think this would be cool if you used a tennis shoe to step on your gel plate. If you make them with the students, that's an idea. Okay. Well, this could be the beginning of a science project, you know, if you're going to study the different planets or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> the galaxy. Yeah. Um, and then, um, so the paper bag, I want to show you about the paper bag. Um, so I cut up a bunch of paper bags and um, I I'm not adverse to using the same color combination again uh, with the, maybe I'll do it a little bit. The blue. I think the golden paint is just more liquid is what the deal is here. Um, and I'm gonna put a little red in for purple. Donna um, would like to know if you can clean the gel plate with just a damp paper towel. I don't. Everybody says to use, everybody says to use baby wipes. So I've only tried with, oh, this looks like, um, okay. Uh, I, I just use the paper baby, you can try it, but, um, I don't think it comes off so well. And um, Nicole has posted great videos for Jelly Arts in the chat if anybody wants to copy down the, um, the link. The videos? So yeah. you can, um, you know, you can screenshot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody taught me that at a work meeting. And Leslie says soap and water is good condition with baby oil. Baby oil. Okay. I'm going to see, I have this print from a, I have this printmaking item from a uh, gourd. I'm going to see if this works. I guess I won't know until I lift it up. This would be so great to do patterns and, uh, Relate it to music. This, when I'm rubbing this one that I made, it feels like I'm rubbing my stomach. It's all wiggly. 
it's all jelly. It's really a cool texture. Oh, now see, there you go. This in is interesting. Can you see it or is it, there you go. Uh, Robin says, do you know where to find the base plate to put the jelly plate on? I, the acetate that I bought to make my own, I went to Joanne Fabrics. And right now Joanne Fabrics is having a sale um, and it's on sale for some reason. This Crit Cut, C-R-I-C-U-T material is on sale and it's, it's only $4 instead of 10. So I, you know, I, the other thing is you can go to, um, you can go to uh, Office Depot and get some sort of acetate. But this was 12 by 12 inches and that's the size. I just wanted it bigger than my jelly plate. So that's why I went there. Um, Cause I wanted to keep the jelly plate. I didn't have anywhere to store the jelly plate. Oh no, this is better. You see, isn't that interesting? That's the ghost print. And um, how did how did you do that again? I did it with this. Uh huh. And I rolled it into the ink, and then the first print came out very. Well, it came out on the, my brown paper bag. Um, and then this one is the ghost print. This was the second print. So, oh, wow. yeah. Um, uh, what else was I going to do? Um, the to okay, let me do one more with the regular print. A regular. What I want to do is show you about printing the fabric. Um, and you can do it with, oh, this would be kind of nice though. Let me see what happens. Okay, I'm going with your suggestions here. Um, I'm gonna, um, you know, by not cleaning my plate, somebody suggested don't clean the plate. Me. Let's see what, never. <laughs> Maybe I'll put a little bit more yellow on. Um, Yeah, the golden paint really works differently than my, I feel like I'm making a leopard or something. This, the, 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 the store-bought plate is much firm, more firm, of course, because it's probably silicone or something. And then um, one of the things I wanted to show you was also about doing just string. Um, so this is just string and I wanted to print on fabric, okay. It just seems to me that if, especially those of us that have printmaking material uh, experience, there are so many things you can think to do. And Jacqueline, I'd love to see how you can get that magazine. I cut out so many different magazines, patterns and designs and magazines, and I couldn't get them to work. It wasn't me who had luck with it. I was the one also struggling. <laughs> oh, you were struggling. Who was I struggling? struggling? Somebody else had luck with it, though. They taught it to their class. Uh, but she said she used the medium, the gel medium. Which right, would, yeah, she, she used something. That yeah, that use. would make more sense because it pulls the ink from the page. Yeah. How do you, how do you keep your paper from shifting? It just sucks on to the gel print. It just goes right on the gel print. The okay. gel, it doesn't move. Even though you might have a bumpy surface? Um, Everything is sticky. Yes. <laughs> it's, 
Yes, it is very sticky. This is fun. And see, then you could do little patterns in between the design with a Sharpie, you know, and make it into a neighborhood or something. <laughs> um, uh, Can you show that? That one again? I love that one. This one, I'm going to try to do a, uh, I'm going to do a, a second print. What's it called? A ghost print. Yes. So I'm using the, you know, the watercolor edge of the paper down. Yeah, I keep one hand on there at all times, I guess, is the thing. Um, and then even just with your hand, it doesn't move like it does on acrylic uh, when we all print on plexiglass. And this is so great, this thing. You could make it out of, you know, it looks like it's made with like a banana leaf wrapped around a piece of cardboard or something. It's just wonderful. Or not a banana leaf, yeah, banana leaf or a grape leaf or something. Okay. And so this is the second print. Can you see this very well? Yeah, well, now it's catching, that's better, yeah. That, why is it so hard to see? I wonder if the light's too bright. There. So this came out this way and then the other one came out this way. So this is the same print, you know? Um, and, uh, yeah, I could do the leaf again, or I could do, uh, the string. Um, let me show you, let me do the, uh, oh, it's red. I wanted the, I don't love this red. Um, red and maybe like well, orange. Uh, okay. I can do orange, I guess. Yeah, I could do orange. Orange is a bad feng shui color, so I have this adversity. Of to, for me, it's a bad feng shui color. So I was okay. like, what's wrong with that red? That's a beautiful red. No, the red's yeah, beautiful. No, I'm supposed to stay away from orange. <laughs> um, you know us weird California people, right? <laughs> I'm from Texas. We don't know things like that. Feng shui, <laughs> oh, it's really great. Um, this looks like, what is that storybook that has the polka dots? Dr. Seuss with the polka dots? I don't know. Yeah, you, we've all read it. Um, so uh, my favorite part, you know, my favorite part is rolling on this sketch pad. <laughs> Your extra oh, ink. Fun. Yeah. Paint. yeah, cleans the brayer. It's really great. Um, I did the, um, I did the string. I think what I'm going to do is put some bubble wrap on. It's very classic. I'm sorry. It's really obvious people, you know, when you make your artwork, you can tell what year it was made because if you've got bubble wrap, you know when bubble wrap was invented, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Not gonna, it's not going to be on pictures from the 60s. You've got acrylic paint there. You've got bubble wrap. You are a contemporary artist. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now what I've done, I'm going to do the circle thing. So I've got bubble wrap circles. And I'm actually going to take my toilet paper roll and use this. The people that are on this watching that know me, my, uh, I'm so uh, anxious all the time. One of my teachers in college used to tell me to have a drink before I came to the morning art class. <laughs> Be um, too wound up for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, dog, my teacher was like, why don't you just have a drink before you come to class? And I'm like, because it's a 10 o'clock class. So I'm going to just use this bottle top and make a couple marks. Oh, it's the same size. Well, that's okay. Not exactly. Too bad I can't say that to my high school kids. Yeah, well, you know, they could, yeah, I know, okay. <laughs> I know what you're thinking and mine come to school that way frequently. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. Well, that wouldn't be bad if they have art first, period. Then I'm going to use an earplug, and I'm going to kind of grind off some of the paint, hopefully. I like all those circles. Well, again, this is, you know, when you teach four-year-olds, you're... See, I used to teach all different grades, and then one girl sassed me one time in class. And I went to my boss and I was like, I want to teach the youngest kids that exist because I love what I do and I don't want to hurt anybody by doing it. And she was so unhappy. That's funny. So then he said, oh, Governor Brown just started a new grade level. Okay, let me. Uh... I love the sass. I'm one of the sassers. <laughs> yeah, but she, yeah. We sass back and forth. <laughs> I, I think it's important it has its place but it just hit me we were doing ceramics and the principal wanted me to do a garden art project and the kids had to make a whole bunch of the same shape and she goes i love art but i don't like this clay project and i got that big lump in my throat like i was gonna cry oh no and i thought uh oh something's wrong i'm doing something wrong and anyway I'm happy now teaching when I teach one. Yeah, they're just, you know, you get hugs all day long. That's the hardest part about being away from work is not getting my hugs. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Okay, so then I'm going to pull this off. This one I know is going to just be, it just always works, you know? Like it, oh, it looks pink on there. Oh, that's so pretty though. It's got so much texture. So oh. many, so many circles. I love it. Yeah, and if you see it up close, it's got all these textures. Yeah, it looks like the yes. texture of a fish or something. So I think that's the best one yet. That's incredible. The more you layer, the better, I guess. The more you layer. Yeah, these, these bubble wrap things. Mm -hmm. And I like the color differentiation. Um, to squirt a couple different colors in there makes a really big deal, makes a big difference. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, I'm going to use this gel plate and I'm going to actually put some yellow on it for, because it's already got some yellow and I'm going to use my other kind of paint. So um, what I'm finding is the goal is not to, is to figure, oh, look at that. It takes it right up. Oh, you know what I should do? I should show you about a flower. So is to... Uh, Oh, look what it's doing. This yellow is out of control. <laughs> What's happening in here? Sometimes with the brayer, if anybody's familiar with gel printing, it takes the ink off. And I don't understand the physics behind that. Maybe if it's too dry, it'll peel up. It'll take it up. Yeah, something. Yes. So I'm going to go into my uh, garden collection from today. And... Um, Oh, this is fun. I'm going to just do this. I'm going to just sprinkle some of these. And uh, I don't know, it's okay. Um, except I need some down here. Does that look random? No, that's bad. Okay. Then someone asked me earlier about uh, it not moving or how you center it or if the paper should be the same size. After you do it a few times, you kind of naturally get a feel for where to put the paper. And then if you put your fingers under the paper edge and you feel with your tip of your finger where the sides are for each paper, side of the paper, your brain can kind of tell you if it's balanced or not. Um, and if anybody works with different kinds of populations and all, uh, you know, kids that are, uh, have physical challenges or visual challenges, this would be really good because you can, um, I mean, they can do all of it, but when it's dry, they can feel the difference between where the ink is and where the ink isn't. 
Oh, this is interesting. Look at this one. Oh, my. And I didn't think it was going to be very dark because it was yellow. So then you can read. This is, say that again, I'm sorry. It looks like bamboo leaves. Are those yeah. bamboo leaves you use? Do you no, know? Bamboo, I don't know. I don't think it was bamboo leaves. I don't it know. It looks like it now on your painting. Uh, so what I'm doing now is carefully taking the leaves off. Uh oh, now there's a blast of wind. Um, and then I'm going to print what's on here. Now, the person that we were talking, when we were talking a few minutes ago about using the back of a laser printed piece of paper or a magazine piece of paper, personally, I think junk mail would work better because the ink I'm thinking is cheaper and it would come off easier on the paper, which is what we need. Um, but this would be a surface that the woman on the video says to let it dry and then put a roll of ink on, very light ink, and then to put your magazine picture on. And then it picks up the dark parts. I went through five magazines and picked out the black ink, the pictures with the best black ink patterns and cars and stuff like that, but I don't think the magazines that this that I had used cheap ink. I think they must have been really good magazines. I don't know, magazines where the ink bound really well with the paper, with the fiber, and it doesn't come off so well. But I know you can do like newspapers and things like that, because that ink, if you can smell the ink, it's going to come off. Oh, this is interesting. So this is remnants of what was left. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you could just do this all day. It's so much fun. Um, it's addictive. It's a what? Does anybody have it's a gel? Yeah. Does anybody have a gel plate that they want to use and print and uh, share? I've been working right along with you the whole time. Have you gotten anything you want to share? Sure. I'm excited. <laughs> I know. This is here's just. One, here's one I did that I got real excited about. Hang on. Let me, let me pin you. Hold on a second. What did you, what did you do? Here, I'm going to spotlight you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Pretty. Wow. Did you use real flowers? That's beautiful. Actually, the funny thing is I had these, you know, the texture rubbing plate? Yeah. Oh, yes. That was the other thing I was going to show you. Yes. And that's what I printed. And then I, I printed some other ones that were like the negative, the positive for it. They turned in, in a sketchbook. They turned out really cool. Yes. That is fantastic. Yeah, I forgot to show you about the... Uh, Stencil. What did you show? What is that? Okay. I'll show mine. Hang on. Uh, spotlight. So I have this. Oh, I like the bubble. Oh, that's pretty. And I got this, which is really cool. Yes. Um, I did a couple in the beginning with my leaves, but I was still just getting used to mm -hmm. how to do it. And I just got this awesome texture that I'm totally in love with. What is that texture? Is that the bubble wrap? That's the bubble That's wrap cool. on a mixture of all the old colors. I just keep adding colors to the plate. And then I took the bubble wrap and pressed it on to get the pattern and took it off and then printed that. Fantastic. Oh, I have one more. I have this one, which was with the um, leaves. Yes, and then you can put the leaves back on and then print it the print it. Yeah, you can you can roll it on the leaves. I love these colors. This is just I love Red. Yeah. Anybody else wanna be spotlighted? <laughs> I will. 
Um, Becky? Yeah. Uh, there we go. Awesome. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Thank that's, you. That's a big... So I just put a leaf down on this one. And this is a ghost print. I just took the leaf off and that's what happened. That's See, I like the ghost prints almost better. I do yeah. too. You know? Definitely. Would anyone else like to be spotlighted? Kara? Kara? Uh, yeah, one. sure. I'll share. Um, this was a toy. Yeah. Looks um, like oh, that's cool. I was printing this guy. It's actually a toy eraser. Oh, wow. Oh, fabulous. And then I printed a fish. Oh, cool. Um, and then I really like the string. And the kit, my kit came with a bunch of little cards that I was printing, but this is, oh, um, I really stayed with like, almost like a, I did like a series of the same kind of print over and over again. So I've got just like a lot of these same types mm -hmm. of prints. I ordered the, the kit. Is it worth it? Oh Are yeah. I love it. Okay. And it comes with these cards. So this is like a card and it like opens up. Oh, how nice. So I did a whole series of these. I wonder if I could point this at my, um, at my window. Can you guys see that? Uh-huh. Oh, know. see the trees. We can't see the, <laughs> the cards. They're too dark. Oh, there they are. You guys see that? Yep. What inks are you using, or what paint are you using? Because I think your the, colors are a what, little clearer when when you did the lips of the, um, of the rhino and the other um, other keychain thing. Uh, so these these are with the kit. They're the jelly inks. Oh, so that's very liquid. Is it very liquid? Um, I don't know, Nancy, because like there is kind of an acrylic, if you could look at it, there's like an acrylic feeling to it. Yes. So I'd say it's like in between uh, acrylic and like tempera. So it's thinner acrylic. A little bit, but it's still kind of giving me that like it's drying like it's acrylic. I yes. wonder if it, it would tell me on the, on the bottle. Um, medium body. Longer, okay. longer open time. I don't know. Professional printmakers selected each color. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it, it says acrylic. Yes, but I'm learning that there's uh, different acrylic thicknesses. Yeah, um, I mean, I like the kit. The kit comes with, um, I'll just show you guys what's in there. This thing, bubble wrap. The cards, oh. these pieces of paper, uh, a brayer, and a bunch of directions on how to how to use different techniques. <clears throat> totally worth it. I almost did it. So you guys reminded me about the stencil. I haven't done the stencil thing yet. I've done all of mine with stencil today. <laughs> I'm about to do string, <laughs> but I got wrapped. I started with stencil and then I couldn't stop, you know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I did this one. This one is with stencils. Which one? Sewing. Oh, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, let me find you and then, and then hold on. Where are you? <laughs> there you are. Okay. Uh, spotlight. There we, there we go. go. Oh, pretty. Oh, beautiful. This one, this one is stencil. And then I did a couple on black paper that are stencil also. Nice. I love the numbers. And then also this is stencil. This was my first one today. Oh, nice. So That's it went backwards, but... You know what I meant to buy? We could also use doilies from the supermarket. Oh, like, yeah. um, you know, regular doilies that you'd put under like cake or pastry. Yeah. With little holes in it. Oh, right. I know what you're talking about. Those would be, those would work really well. Uh -huh. Those are fun. I think I have those in at school. 
The paint that I use is this stuff that you can get at Walmart. <laughs> and I love it for this. This is what I've been using. This is what I use in the classroom too. That like apple barrel or whatever. It's that craft paint. It's acrylic, but it's craft paint, but it's super thin and it's perfect for this. And also it's cheap. So it's good. They can spill it. Who cares? <laughs> I am so happy that everybody is playing. It's so fun. This is my favorite. Yep. I wonder, um, one of my friends was trying to raise money once and she, um, to go on a trip. And so she mono printed t-shirts and just bought $3 t-shirts and then did mono prints, but she did hers on acrylic. Oh, yeah. And then she sold them for, she only had to sell a hundred. She sold for $15 and bought her airplane ticket and zoomed she away. Brilliant. Printed with acrylic on t-shirts? She printed with fabric paint on t-shirts. That's great. Uh, but I don't know why we couldn't, oh, look at this. I don't know why we couldn't use fabric paint. So I just did a print, I mean, you know, the, uh, stencil some came out some didn't before but these would be so great to create oh, for yeah. collages. you know i'm spotlighting your your oh doctor. thank you i was like how are you doing the stencil i want to see well, the stencil i rolled the green on here so you're putting the ink first and then you're putting I'm your stencil ink first and then i oh, put yeah. the stencil on I put the stencil down and then I rolled, then I printed through it. Oh, I see, okay. But that's opposite the way that I do it. I'm gonna try your way. I take my, I leave mine blank and then I roll the stencil and then I take the stencil off and then I roll over it with another color and then pull it all up together. Oh, I see. So it's slightly more complicated than what you're doing. I'm gonna try your way. Easy. Now I didn't do the fabric. Let me do the fabric again. Yeah, this dried. Okay. Got it to prepare. You can also run these under warm water and wash it that way, but I'm always afraid I'm going to drop it or something. And you have to store these on a flat surface. Sorry, I didn't put any music on. We're not allowed to do music. I don't Who know. I, when Patricia, you weren't here when it happened. When I posted our video, when you played the music during our meditative drawing, and uh, Patricia, are you still here? Like, I don't know, I guess not. Um, when I posted the video on YouTube, we got tagged for using music with that was copyrighted. Oh no. Yeah, so we, I said, okay, we'll sing to each other from now on so we don't get in trouble. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. <laughs> All the things in the world and they're watching art videos. Right. Somebody really does that all day, huh? Uh, maybe, maybe, subversive it's, maybe it's just as simple as crediting the music 
whoever's singing or, or you know, the musician, and then they'll leave us alone. I have no idea. I'm, I'm new to all of this hosting stuff, so. Uh, there's always something, something to learn, too. When I was teaching the kids about printmaking, they could have cared less about the paint. They just wanted to roll the brayer. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the best. They're so fun. They were so cute. They are cute. The big kids are the same way. So I'm using another gourd. I love my string one. I did a string one. It's so awesome. If I was really good about this, I would pick up the, br the um, plate every time I went to print and put something clean underneath so it wouldn't get the paint around it on. But I'm not that good. That's the fabric? This is the fabric, yes. And it's actually a sheet. Huh. A sheet that was stained or something or whatever. I Something happened and I thought, I'm not throwing this away. And then one day I realized, oh, I have that sheet. Yeah, it really likes fabric. It just sucks it right in. Oh, wow, look at this. That's really cool. Yeah. Where did you get those stamps? Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> well, but you can buy them in stores that have, you know, African art stores. Uh-huh. They have prints. Uh, they have stamps. What are they called? What would you call them? So that oh, I know. These are gourds. These are gourd. You know, they're from gourds. Call it gourd stamps? A stamp made out of a gourd, yeah. If the people are African that are in the store, they would understand, it depends what country they're from, they might under they would understand what you mean. I would bet you could buy them online. Probably. Didn't work at all. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, staff, for bringing us together from Becky. Oh, this this I have to go, Marion. Okay, really? great. I hope you guys can print. It was our pleasure. This was a lot of fun. I have some crazy textures here. I'm in love with it. What are you using? Um, I'm just layering and layering and layering paint. And then I did a relief with the, um, the leaves. 
And here, I'll tell you what I just got, because this is like crazy, crazy colors. Let me find where I am and I'll show you here. Look at that. Oh, that's really nice on the dark background. That's wonderful. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, yeah, really uh, nice. The one, I love this one, this one over here. This is just, the colors are nuts. I'm having so much fun. I know, right? See, I think, Steph, I think this is so important to do when we do go back teaching. Important and getting our hands dirty and remembering what we're really all in this for yes. and, and learning it, new techniques that I've never really done before, getting out of my comfort zone. And yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. And thank you. And thank you all for, for supporting this group because I think we're, we're all in the same boat. I love this. And so many so many hours a day that we do spend on the computer with our with our work totally. and we're not doing the art that we love i just want to play yes what happens if i i do too but there's there it's a good excuse to have to play you know well, Lee said she rushes home on Thursdays just to play with us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then you can also use a Q-tip and draw with a Q-tip. Oh, guys, don't forget before you disappear, let me know if anybody wants to do September 4th and what you have in mind. We're down to, we're down to 10 people. <laughs> To right now, you mean? Yep, we're down to ten. Folks have been have been leaving. Did we lose people? Yeah, everybody's got stuff to do, but that's okay. Um, just to give you everybody a heads up, it is twenty after eight, so we can go a few more minutes. I'm going. You know what? I'm going to put us on grid mode so we can see everybody. I want to see everybody who's left. Yeah, but go full screen. I tried a string. Oh, I love I that. It reminds me of the um, the neurographic thing we did. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to try the neurographic with the little kids. That's a good idea. They're gonna, they're gonna love it. Yeah, I'm curious to see what it's gonna look like. Okay, this didn't work much at all. Okay. But you can reprint, you know, that's the good thing is you can print again. Um, Lee Haywood left, she said kids bath time. Thanks everyone, good night from North Carolina. Those of you that have both the store-bought jelly plates and the homemade ones, do the homemade ones work just as well? Do they hold up as well? I have a store-bought one, so I don't know what the homemade ones are like. The homemade one that I just made, it's, um, hmm, it's more wiggly. Right. And it has more imperfections. Okay. It's not like this perfect gel plate that I've been using. Um, definitely has imperfections. The, the gel plates are expensive, so I can't afford to buy them for all my students. They would be fine with the homemade ones. The homemade ones, okay. We That's use homemade exclusively. My students have never seen a store-bought gel plate. Okay. They don't even know they exist. <laughs> okay. And you know, I saw somebody on a uh, line, by the way, who was, um, she did a, I don't know what it was, like a pie plate or something. And then she took cookie cutters and put them in there and filled the pie plate with cookie cutters. And so then her gel plate was the shape of a flower or was the shape of the gingerbread. Oh. 
so that the kid, so she had small, yeah, it was really nice. So then she could make, you can make stamps with the gel plates too that That's way. That's what she did, yes. Which is why I had this, which I didn't use yet, was why I brought this piece of, um, piece of acrylic so that you could stamp on top of other things. And I think if you use stuff from nature, you know, the kids would really like it. Mm -hmm. I think. I made little stamps out of those erasers too. I One just... of my students made, um... that's cool. One of my kids used big leaves like from a magnolia tree and made some um, prints on a gel plate and she took those to vase, which is our state art competition. Oh, wow. Is she turning into a printmaker? I don't know. She graduated, so I'm not sure. It was her first time, but she's just one of those kids that, like, as soon as she sees how, how something works, she knows what she wants to make with it. She was like that the whole time I taught her. <laughs> yeah. Those kind of kids intimidate me. I had an autistic kid in one of my classes and he was in fifth grade and he literally had been locked in a closet for years and all this horrible, horrible stuff. And he was the most phenomenal artist in the world. And every time the paraprofessional would bring him into the classroom, when I would give the demonstration, I'd ask her to do something with him so he wouldn't see my demonstration because I felt like I was slowing his progress down by having him copy me. And so that when it was time to work, we would just give him the supplies and <laughs> he was phenomenal. So he would just wing it? He would, whatever he would make was always better than anything I taught. No kidding, no kidding. <laughs> He was one of those kids that you wish didn't, you know, who's, who is uh, held back by going to school. Wow. You know, those kind of kids that school isn't doing them any good because they are way beyond us. They're special. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna throw, I'll be right back. Yeah, the homemade gel plate doesn't feel like it's going to last for years. Okay. It feels very tentative. Okay. Mine are fine. <laughs> How long have you had yours? Have you had yours? Yeah, I've been, I, my students used them all year last year and they're still fine. I did bring, the one that I'm using is one that I brought home from school and I did Repour it because it had a lot of old acrylic on it. So I repoured it and strained the piece big pieces of paint out of it And then yeah, that's the thing that they it. say with the homemade ones is you can microwave them and yeah. then, and then repour it Yeah, I mean there were um, There was one that I made that was smaller and it wasn't as thick as some of the others because I was trying some small shapes in case somebody didn't want to work at all the same sizes and it was a little thinner and that one ripped, but I just reported it. And the kid that ripped it was like, I'm so sorry, miss. I was like, no big deal. And then I showed him what I did and he was like, oh, <laughs> okay then. He felt bad. He was like, sorry that's cool. Your stuff. But no, I just, but I've been, we've been using them all year. They're fine. Huh. But I, I might have used a different recipe than she used. So I don't know. It sounded the same, but I'm not sure different proportions. People were doing different okay. proportions. Yeah. So, but I'll share mine. So if you want to experiment and see 
just try some different recipes and see which ones work best for what you're doing. And you know the kind of students you have. So. <laughs> Well, when I saw the one person online on YouTube who did smaller ones, you know, when she put the uh, the cookie cutters in the pie plate shape and yeah. then made different shapes, that looked like really a lot of fun. It's a different kind, right? Okay. No, not my phone. No, oh, it's I'm using it. I have to tell you something. You might want one of these if you don't have it. Time to go? Yeah, it's 8 30. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody. Please email me if you have questions. Email me the recipe for the for the jelly plate. Yes, and I will. Out when I get, um, I'll send it out with the video links. And if anybody wants to volunteer for September fourth, let me know. Um, have a great week, you guys, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was very fun tonight. Yeah. Good. Have fun cleaning up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Steph. You're welcome. Thanks, Nancy. This was a blast. Yeah. Yeah. Glad I found you guys. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Share the share about the group and uh, invite your friends. I will. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, here we go.